Giuseppe Joe Aiello was a Sicilian bootlegger and organized crime leader in Chicago during the Prohibition era. He was best known for his long and bloody feud with Chicago outfit boss Al Capone. Aiello masterminded several unsuccessful attempts to whack Capone and fought against his former business partner Tony Lombardo. Aiello and his ally Bugs Moran are believed to have arranged the murder of Lombardo, which directly led Capone to organize the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in retaliation. Despite being forced to flee Chicago multiple times throughout the gang war, Aiello eventually took control of the Sicilian Union in 1929 and ranked seventh among the Chicago Crime Commission's list of top public enemies. Aiello was killed after Capone gunman ambushed him as he exited a Chicago apartment building where he'd been hiding out, shooting him 59 times. Aiello was born on September 27, 1890 in Bulgaria, Sicily. Aiello was part of a large and impoverished family of at least nine other brothers and many cousins. His mother died when he was a child. In July 1907, at the age of 17, Aiello immigrated to the United States to join family members already residing there. After arriving in New York City by boat, he worked a series of menial jobs in Buffalo and Utica, New York, before connecting with his father, brothers, and cousins in Chicago. The family set up several businesses in both New York and Chicago, including the financially successful Aiello Brothers Bakery, and they became importers of such groceries as olive oil, cheeses, and sugar. Aiello was co-owner of the cheese importing business with a fellow Sicilian, Antonio Tony the Scourge Lombardo, an ally of organized crime figure Al Capone. Aiello was president of the company, which was called Antonio Lombardo & Co., and Capone was said to have lent both men $100,000 to start the enterprise. With the enactment of prohibition and the start of bootlegging, the sugar import business brought Aiello into contact with organized crime, although with his brothers Dominic, Antonio, Andrew, and Carlo. In Chicago, they made a small fortune selling sugar and other home-cooked alcohol components to the Jenna crime family, and Aiello earned enough money to buy a three-story mansion in Rogers Park. However, he craved recognition and prestige in addition to money, something he was gaining as he was becoming known as a top organized crime boss of Chicago. When the Jenna family lost power in Chicago following gang wars, the Aiello's believed themselves the successors of their territory. Joe Aiello made several unsuccessful attempts to assassinate his rival, Al Capone. In November 1925, Lombardo was named head of the Sicilian Union, a Sicilian-American benevolent society that had been corrupted by gangsters. An infuriated Aiello, who wanted the position himself, believed Capone was responsible for Lombardo's ascension and resented the non-Sicilian's attempts to manipulate affairs within the Union. Aiello severed all personal and business ties with Lombardo and entered into a feud with him and Capone, essentially ending a Chicago gang peace treaty that had been enforced since the 1926 murder of Capone rival Jaime Weiss. Aiello allied himself with several other Capone enemies. While newspapers falsely reported that Aiello had entered into an active alliance with Bugs Moran and his Northside gang at the time, Moran in fact pledged no specific support to Aiello until later, and instead privately supported Aiello from the sidelines without actively participating. Aiello plotted to eliminate both Lombardo and Capone, and started in the spring in 1927 made several attempts to assassinate Capone. On one occasion, he offered money to the chef of Joseph Esposito's Bella Napoli Cafe, Capone's favorite restaurant, to put prussic acid in Capone and Lombardo's soup. Reports indicated he offered between ten and 35000 Instead, the chef exposed the plot to Capone, who responded by dispatching men to destroy one of Aiello's stores on West Division Street with machine gun fire. More than 200 bullets were fired into the Aiello Brothers Bakery on May 28, 1927, wounding Joe's brother, Antonio. During the summer and autumn of 1927, a number of hitmen Aiello hired to kill Capone were themselves slain. Among them were Anthony Russo and Vincent Spicuza, each of whom had been offered 25000 by Aiello to kill Capone and Lombardo. Aiello eventually offered a $50,000 reward for anyone who eliminated Capone. At least 10 gunmen tried to collect on Aiello's bounty, but ended up dead. Capone ally Ralph Sheldon attempted to kill both Capone and Lombardo for Aiello's reward, but Capone henchman Frank Nitti's intelligence network learned of the transaction and had Sheldon shot in front of a Westside hotel, although he didn't die. In November 1927, Aiello organized machine gun ambushes across from Lombardo's home in a cigar store frequented by Capone, but those plans were foiled after an anonymous tip led police to raid several addresses and arrest a Milwaukee gunman and four other Aiello gunmen. After the police discovered receipts for the apartments in the gunman's pockets, he confessed that Aiello had hired him to kill Capone and Lombardo, leading the police to arrest Aiello himself and bring him to the South Clark Street Police Station. 
Upon learning of the arrest, Capone dispatched nearly two dozen gunmen to stand guard outside the station and await Aiello's release. The men made no attempt to conceal their purpose there, and reporters and photographers rushed to the scene to observe Aiello's expected murder. Capone gunman Frank Perry, Sam Marcus, and Louis Little New York Campania were arrested as they tried to enter the front of the station and placed in a cell next to Aiello, who Campania told, You're dead, friend. Dead. You won't get to the end of the street still walking. Aiello pleaded for mercy and promised to sell his possessions and leave Chicago with his family if they let him go, but Campania refused the request. When released, Aiello was given a police escort out of the station to safety. He later failed to make a court appearance after his attorney claimed he suffered from a nervous breakdown. Aiello disappeared with some family members to Trenton, New Jersey, from whence he continued his campaign against Capone and Lombardo. Aiello's brother, Dominic, returned to Chicago in January 1928 to attend to family matters while his brother remained in New Jersey. One day he received a telephone call warning him to leave town, after which the Aiello brothers' bakery was shot up by gunmen. Aiello briefly allied himself with former Capone employer and friend, Frankie Yale, meeting him with regularity in New York City and plotting Capone's overthrow, until Yale himself was murdered. Aiello was said to have fled to Wisconsin under the protection of the Milwaukee crime family, and also briefly took refuge in Buffalo with his ally there, crime family boss Stefano Magadino. With Aiello still in hiding, Capone started targeting Aiello's men and killed several over the next few years, including his brother Dominic. Aiello returned to Chicago in the summer of 1928 and once again approached Moran, whose relationship with Capone had degenerated even further, making him much more receptive to an active alliance with Aiello. They conspired to eliminate Lombardo, a task they assigned to hitmen Frank and Peter Gusenberg. Lombardo was shot to death on a busy Chicago street on September 7, 1928, and although never arrested, at least one of Gusenberg's brothers is believed to have been among the shooters. After Lombardo's death, Aiello attempted to elevate his ally, Peter Rizzuto, to the Sicilian Union position, but Rizzuto was killed by shotgun blasts outside his home. Meanwhile, Capone retaliated against Moran by organizing the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, a hit that wiped out the Gusenberg brothers, decimated Moran's forces, and resulted in the loss of a significant amount of Aiello's support. Shortly afterwards, Aiello persuaded Capone killers Albert Anselmi and John Scalise to betray their employer and convinced Joseph Giunta, the new head of the Sicilian Union, to support Aiello in eliminating Capone and taking control of the north side of Chicago following the departure of Bugs Moran. However, Capone learned of Aiello's plot in April 1929 and killed all three men. The violent retaliation against Aiello indirectly led him to finally become head of the Union. During a conference in Atlantic City, numerous mob bosses supported Aiello's promotion with the hopes of restoring order in Chicago, and Capone apparently accepted the decision at least temporarily. Retired Chicago mob boss Johnny Torrio was said to have mediated a peace agreement among Capone, Aiello, and Moran, in which they agreed to end the gang warfare and murders. However, Aiello's accession coincided with Capone serving a year in prison for carrying a concealed weapon, which Aiello saw as an opportunity to take control of some of Capone's territory and scheme yet again for his assassination. Aiello gained a measure of nationwide notoriety around this time after ranking 7th on Chicago Crime Commission's Chairman Frank Loesch's Public Enemies List, released in April 1930, which identified the top 28 people he saw as corrupting Chicago. Through his mafia boss allies Magadino and Gaspar Milazzo, Aiello arranged a meeting with Joe Masseria, the capo di tutti capo based in New York City, seeking support in Aiello's efforts against Capone. During the meeting, Masseria offered to support Aiello in exchange for control of the east side of Chicago, which would allow Aiello to keep the city's west side. The offer infuriated Aiello, who threatened Masseria and ordered him to leave the city. In turn, Masseria spread false rumors that Aiello attempted to kill Masseria, giving him a pretext to support Capone in retaliation. Joseph Bonanno later described this as a key incident starting the Castamlarese War in New York City. Masseria openly supported Capone, requiring a strong alliance with him following the death of Masseria ally Joe Morello. He also offered territory to Milazzo if he betrayed Aiello, an offer Milazzo rebuffed and considered insulting. As a result, Aiello backed Sal Maranzano in the Casmalese War, providing the Maranzano forces with $5,000 a week for their war chest. During the early months of 1930, Aiello arranged several unsuccessful assassination attempts against Capone bodyguards. Aiello hoped to leave Capone vulnerable by depleting his security, and Capone began to suspect Aiello had spies within the Chicago outfit because he seemed to have inside knowledge about where his targets would be and when. 
In August 1930, two months before Aiello's death, the state's attorney conducted a raid on Aiello's home, obtaining records as part of a series of raids by United States government to fight against gangland activities in Chicago. In 1930, upon learning of Aiello's continued plotting against him, Capone resolved to finally eliminate him. In the weeks before Aiello's death, Capone's men tracked him to Rochester, New York, where he had connections through Magadino, and plotted to kill him there. But Aiello returned to Chicago before the plot could be executed. Aiello, angst-ridden from the constant need to hide out and the killings of several of his men, set up residence in the Chicago apartment of Sicilian Union treasurer. He moved in on October 13, 1930 and rarely left the apartment. However, his wife and child occasionally visited him, and authorities theorized that Capone's forces located Aiello by tracking his family members. Men who gave the names Morris Friend and Henry Jacobson rented rooms in an apartment across the street overlooking the apartment building and began observing Aiello. On October 23rd, Aiello made plans to permanently leave Chicago and apparently move to Mexico, although an associate later told police Aiello was simply leaving the house for a barber's appointment. Upon exiting the building to enter a taxi cab, a gunman in a second floor window across the street started firing at Aiello with a submachine gun. Aiello was said to have been shot at least 13 times before he toppled off the building steps and moved around the corner, attempting to move out of the line of fire. Instead, he moved directly into the range of a second submachine gun positioned on the third floor of another apartment block and was subsequently gunned down. After the ambush, the two apparent shooters ran from the buildings and fled in a Ford sedan. The car was later discovered to have been set on fire and destroyed. Aiello's body was loaded into the taxi cab and taken to Garfield Park Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The coroner eventually removed 59 bullets, weighing over a pound, from his body. He was shot more times than any single victim of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of our Mafia TV series, please like and subscribe. Until next time, forget about it.